Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Nathan, this is Raw Masters. How's it going? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. Alright, so at the time of filming, it's fall, so all the leaves have fallen on my ground. I should probably pick up all those leaves, but instead I've become lazy and I decided to do a cool well, vacuum review for you guys. Alright, so in front of me we have the Procenic A50T. And in this video we'll do a unboxing. Yes, I know the box has seen better days, but hopefully everything hasn't fallen out of the truck and it's still in this box. Also, we'll do the cleanup challenges and we'll check out the app overview because this guy does have Wi-Fi. Alright, since I've done so many robot vacuum reviews, I have to pull up my uh, cheat sheet so I know exactly uh, what this robot vacuum entails. So let's go and uh, pull it up. So I'm on Pacini's website and it looks like the A50T retails for $259. But check out my uh, links below because I do have a coupon and you probably could save a few bucks if you go to my links. Alright, so let's go down here. Looks like we have app control. So yes, this guy does have Wi-Fi control. I don't know if it supports the 5 gigahertz. I think it's only the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. Also, check this out guys. 3,000 pascals. That's amazing. I remember back in the day, like the Roblox S6 Max V, you spend three times as much and it's only 2,000 pascals. So, nowadays, 3,000 is the new norm. 4,000, 5,000 pascals. These world backups are definitely getting more powerful. Alright, so we got three power levels, silent mode, standard mode, strong mode. Also, we have V-Boost technology. What that does is allows the robot vacuum to increase its suction when it detects carpet. So it can uh, clean deeper into those carpet fibers. So very cool. Also, this guy has a 2-in-1 cleaning, so it does have a water reservoir. So the water reservoir is 300 milliliters, and you can also use the 300 milliliter dust bin, which is nice. So it can both vacuum and mop at the same time. Also, you can swap it out to the larger 500 milliliter dust tank if you just want to vacuum. So sweet. Alright, and it's electronically controlled. So that's nice. So once the robot's done mopping, it doesn't leak on your floor. Also, if it goes on carpet, it won't mop your carpet. So that's a nice touch. Alright, so this guy does support Alexa and Google. And you have long endurance. So with that 2600 milliamp hour battery, you get about 2 hours of runtime. Has automatic recharging. Most of these robot vacuums do have that capability, so it's nice that the A50T does have that as well. Also, you got magnetic tape, so what you do is you lay down some magnetic strips around the areas you don't want the robot vacuum to transition over, and the robot vacuum will prevent those areas. Alright, so the last thing we want to talk about is the smart navigation. This guy has that systematic back and forth clean pattern, like on the more expensive robot vacuums, so that's nice that this guy can probably cover a larger area as well. And here's the uh, cleaning modes, you got edge cleaning, spot cleaning, and auto cleaning, has anti-fall sensors, has a compact design, and a new cover. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, check out this 850T and see what it's all about. Hmm, I wonder how I get this guy open. Check this box out, yeah, it's definitely been through a lot, and uh, I think it came from overseas, so you notice that Chinese writing and everything. And yes, it does have batteries, so don't worry, these batteries are safe so it won't explode. Kids, don't play with scissors. Alright, let's see. Uh, just, ah, uh, okay, it's already open. Wow, I was thinking ahead. Ah, uh, alright. Whoa, look at this, guys. Ah, uh, put my smartphone somewhere else so I don't drop it. Oh, uh, the Pacenic A50T in all its glory. Yep, that's how you unbox, guys. Okay, so it looks like we got some uh, 3M stick tape to lay down the magnetic strips, so very nice. Here's our cradle, so we can get that opened up for you guys. Looks like a traditional cradle. Remember the Yeti K100 videos I've done? Yes, exact same style where you can put the remote up top. Also can wrap the cable around back here. So very nice. Okay, here's our remote control. Makes a cool sound. Yep, awesome sound. So there you go, it looks like we have the auto, we have the return to home, you got your directional control pad, play pause, you got your clock, you got your uh, notifications, you got your spot clean, it looks like we got edge clean, we got uh, auto mode, and we have power levels, so very nice. And it has a little screen up top, so cool little handheld remote. Okay, so here's the 201 tank, let's check it out, let's open up this flappy lid here. Oh, there's my uh, mini chips ahoy, I was wondering where those were, sweet. Alright, so you got a 300 milliliter dustbin right here. Also, you have a 300 milliliter tank right here. So it's a 2 in 1, so the raw vacuum can vacuum and mop at the same time. And here's some clean instructions, so very, very nice. Let's go ahead and remove the mopping pad. Should be fairly easy. Just remove this kind of elastic strap here. 
on either ends. And it's just held on by Velcro. Makes it really easy to uh, wash in your wash and dryer. Cool. We get next to filter, so that's nice. Looks like we got a bunch of side brushes, so sweet. Uh, looks like we got one spare. We got a comb. Yes, I can comb my hair. I probably need a haircut, but you know, eventually I'll get one. And we got the power brick. Ah, uh, let's see. It looks like this guy does support the 100 to 240 volts. So yes, you can work this overseas. And check this guy out. Okay. Ah. And we got a frisbee. I always like frisbees. Oh no, I just got on my camera. Alright, hold on. One second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's try over there. I uh, got a cardboard hat thing. I don't know what this is for. Who knows? And plastic bag. Get all this stuff out of here. Alright. Check that out guys. That's actually a really cool design. So they talked about the new uh, U-shaped cover. Very nice. And you notice the sticker here. Kind of tells you to uh, make sure you turn the robot on prior to use. So there should be a power switch right there. And I do like the fact that this switch is uh, waterproof or water resistant and dustproof. So that's nice. Uh, let's see. Let's check this guy out. I don't know how this thing turns on. Also, I believe these buttons are compassive touch. So you just touch them and they should work. Uh, you got your uh, power button, probably start stop. You also have your return to home button and your Wi-Fi indicator. So very, very nice. Uh, Sparkle, this is supposed to be a professional vacuum review. Uh, what are you doing there, buddy? Uh, Nikki, you do realize that you're just talking to a stuffed animal that the personality is actually right, okay. coming from you? Um, okay, I'm just gonna go fall off this table now. Don't worry about me. Very nice. Here's a quick spin around the robot. Guys, give you guys a quick look here. And just remove these little bumper protectors. Prevents the bumper from moving during shipment. Okay. And there's our physical bumper. Alright, let's go ahead and get the side brushes on. They just snap right in. We'll get the other one. There you go. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, this is a traditional well, vacuum design. You got your dual side brushes here. You got your front wheel caster. Your dual charging contacts right up here. You also have some clip sensors, so it prevents the robot from going down the stairs. Also, I like the fact that you do have a removable battery cover. Just with these two screws, you can take out this cover and interchange the battery. That's probably the thing that will wear out versus the battery. So they typically last three to five years. You also have your adjustable wheels. They look standard to most of our vacuums I reviewed. So we'll see how well this guy can transition over different types of terrain. Also, you got your extractor bar. Let's check that out. So this is a standard extractor bar. Um, it's a combination of bristles and silicone. And one thing you can't do is remove the ends. Uh, let me double check here. Yep, it doesn't look like I can remove the ends. So that's just one thing to consider. But you do have the clean tool, which is somewhere. I lost it already. Uh, I wonder if Placina can send me another cleaning tool because I already lost it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get this guy back in. So just follow the ends here and it should just slot right in. And you just put your cover back on. You're good to go. One thing I did notice is there's a little speaker. We'll see if this roll up vacuum uh, creates beeps or if it yells at you and announces what it's doing. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the back here. So this is just a standard uh, dustbin. Up top here is your uh, filters. You got your primary filter. Looks like you have a secondary mesh filter. And lastly, you got this uh, other filter too. So that's cool. Let's check out the back. There's that dustbin. I thought it was 600 milliliters, but they say it's 500 milliliters. So it looks a little bit smaller than the other well, vacuums I've reviewed. Very nice. Let's go ahead and uh, put the filter back in. So the black side goes down. And it should just snap back in. See if I can... Ah!
Alright, let's go ahead and uh, speed up this video so I don't bore you guys. So the first thing that A50T is going to do is you're going to start with the back and forth clean pad. And it's going to start in my living room area. I did put some chairs and a table leg down there so you can see how well it actually navigates around these objects. Now one thing I've done is do a U-shaped chair leg. Sometimes these roll up vacuums do struggle because of the shape of the U-shape or the bar and they kind of get hung up. But the A50T seems to do a good job. Now how this guy navigates is uses accelerometers and gyros. So picture if you blindfold yourself and try to estimate where you are within the room. That's the same principle that these robot vacuums use if they have accelerometers and gyros. So that's just one thing to consider if you have a very complex environment with a lot of obstacles. Sometimes they can get lost or if you physically move the robot, they won't be able to relocate themselves. But one benefit of having a gyro based robot vacuum is this does have live mapping. So if you physically move it to a new area, you don't have to worry about it losing its map because it creates a new map each time. Alright, so it looks like the A50T is going to my kitchen area. We'll see how well it does. And we'll also check out my kitchen rugs or bathroom mats. And we'll see how well it can transition over these roller mats. Some of our vacuums do struggle with this, but it looks like the A50T was able to get onto it. Um, I have noticed on some roller vacuums, their cliff sensors are super sensitive and they'll actually think it's a cliff or an edge. But the A50T had no problems getting onto these types of bathroom rugs. Or why do they call them bathroom rugs? They should be called mats. Alright, let's keep on going and you can see that the A50T was able to get through this crevice, uh, no problem. The wheels are adjustable and they're actually quite large for the raw vacuum size, so they're able to transition over this area, no problem. Okay, let's go ahead and keep speeding up the video. So once it's done in the kitchen area, it's going to move on into my hallway and we'll see how well it does. Now, I just blocked up a section of my home. I didn't do my entire home because this guy, despite having a smart navigation, did take a little bit longer than most well, back in with the smart navigation. I would say it's better than a random base for a vacuum, but not as good as like a liner base or a camera base. Um, you may notice that it's starting to get offset, like it's a more of a diagonal pattern. Uh, that's because the raw vacuum's estimation is kind of getting obscured. And you can notice this in my uh, daughter's bedroom area. It's definitely obscured or kind of like offset. But we'll see how well the world vacuum does on this little mat here. Sometimes the world vacuum will suck it up and get stuck. For this stereo, it actually suck up a small object. I believe it's like a rubber band or something. So she doesn't lose all of her toys. But anyways, it was pretty easy to just remove the object. Just kind of gently pull on it and it should free the robot. Now just press the power button again and the world vacuum should uh, continue cleaning. One thing to remember is since I physically moved it or paused the robot, the robot actually created a new map. So that's just something to consider. Okay, so it's going to go and go into my daughter's bathroom area and then it's going to move on to my office area and then it should be done with this cleaning job. Alright, so here's my laundry area. As you can see that diagonal effect, not the most efficient cleaning pattern. And it decided to go back into my hallway area. I wonder if it's going to go into my office area. Alright, so it looks like it went back into my kitchen area. Um, you may notice some areas it missed, kind of like under the kitchen table. But then again, you can always rerun the roll vacuum or just place the roll vacuum in the certain area or one area and have it just do that area. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons of this guy. I think the uh, things I like about it is it's fairly cheap for what you get. With 3,000 pascals and this thing being under, I believe, like $200, it's not a bad price. Also, since it does have the smart navigation, it can uh, cover a large area. And it was able to find its docking station. I do recommend putting a docking station in an open area so the world vacuum can find it. Now the biggest downside is the navigation sometimes can get wonky if you basically move the robot. Or if you have an area that's fairly complex, you may notice that diagonal pattern. So keep in mind if you think about buying a robot vacuum that has gyro and accelerometers. Alright, so after we finish this cleaning challenge, let's go and uh, check out the mopping challenge and we'll keep going with this video. Whoa, where are we at here guys? We're in my kitchen. So, you know what that means. We're going to go ahead and check out the mopping feature of the Pacific A50T. So, what you have to do is just take out this dustbin here. And we're going to swap it out with the 2-in-1 tank. So, before we do that, let's go ahead and get our washable mopping pad. 
As you may notice, like these little elastic strips here, you guys see that? They actually go on this uh, groove here, so let's go ahead and uh, do that real quick. Let's see if I can get the right uh, orientation. Should go like this, I think. So you guys see that? Okay, let's see. Just kind of slips on here like that. And make sure it's secure, and we'll do it for the other side. Alright, so I got both the tabs lined up and they're installed. And now you just kind of fold it over. Make sure it's flat. So next we're going to go and fill up the little water tank. It's 300 milliliters. I have to uh, pre wet the mopping pad before I start. There we go. We should be good to go. Sweet. So in the ideal world, everything would go smooth as butter, but with my luck, everything went down the crapper. Alright, so this is what happened. I did my first run, and I forgot to turn on a vacuum motor. So I selected automatically mop, and what this does is actually just does mop only. So all the mud and stuff got stuck in the extractor bar and created a giant mess, which I just showed. But my second time around, I did auto clean, and the roll vacuum did a lot better since you had the 3000 pascals of suction. And we'll continue on with this challenge. I'm going to run it a second time, and we'll see how much dirt and debris this guy picks up. Well, looks like this robot needs some cleaning. Check it out, my mopping pad's filthy, and my extractor bars are filthy, and definitely uh, my wheels. So let me go ahead and get this cleaned up. We'll do a second round and see how well this guy can do. I found that the handheld remote provides a lot of functions that you can do in the app, but we want some additional controls like the scheduling feature, schedule different days of the week. Also within the scheduling feature, you can also do an edge clean, which is a nice touch. Uh, most of our vacuums just have an auto mode. And lastly, with the app, you can control the water flow and you can use Alexa and Google. I did find this robot vacuum did a pretty good job cleaning minus the navigation quirks, but let's take a look at the robot vacuum now. Yep, it's still pretty dirty, even though I did a thorough cleaning. Uh, I still have a lot of mud on my floors. So who's the Proscenic 850T for? Well, it's for someone that wants an easy to use robot vacuum because it has that handheld remote. Also for someone that doesn't want to spend an arm and leg on a robot vacuum. Maybe they're just looking for a second robot vacuum. I also appreciate the higher section at 3000 pascals and this little guy can do a good job cleaning just keep in mind you don't get all the smart mapping features and the navigation could use some work so hopefully they can improve that over time all right so there's still a lot of dirt and grime on the floor uh keep in mind that these vacuum and mopping robot hybrids are designed for light mopping tasks i uh, did that really designed for like wet mud or like heavy stain but i just wanted to showcase what these things can do um one thing I do recommend is uh, washing out the mopping pad often, especially in a large area like this, because the mopping pad will fill up with a lot of dirt and grime and just start spraying around. Alright, let's go and uh, check out the results. So if you like this type of video, found it helpful, give me a big old thumbs up. Or if you just like me making a mess, well, give me a thumbs up for that. I believe my wife spent all day mopping the floors, but I guess you can do it all over again. So if you're new to my channel, welcome, my name is Nathan, this is Ron Masters. So you can see that my testing are a little bit different than other YouTube channels. I try to do stress tests, I also try to do different types of tests to keep it unique. So consider subscribing, I do have a lot of new products coming down the pipeline. So if you're interested in like LiDAR based raw vacuums or camera based, well this is the channel for you. Alright, have a great rest of the day, be safe out there, and I'll see you guys next time.